Okay, traders, we're going to talk today about uh, when should you lower your size? So uh, why are we, are we actually dealing with that? Um, well, that's because many of our trades are just going the wrong way or sometimes they're going the wrong way or sometimes we just they just don't do what we expected them to do. The problem with us human beings is that uh, we hate to admit our mistakes. I mean, when's the last time you admitted your mistake? Um, especially me when I've got like uh, 2,000 people watching uh, down my back when I'm, tra when I'm trading stocks uh, uh, <laughs> with people watching how I'm doing. I mean, it's not easy. If you thought it is easy to trade uh, with a few thousand people just watching and uh, thinking every, every minute uh, if you're making money, losing money and you need to prove yourself, well, tell you what, it's not easy. But that, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you. Do you like to admit your mistakes? Like, um, well, uh, let's just assume I'm, I'm not going to talk about trading. I'm, I'm just going to start with something as simple as uh, buying a new car. When's the last time you bought a car? Uh, did you buy a good car? Did you like your car? What happened when your friends asked you whether uh, you like the car that you bought? Even if you think it's a really bad car or you didn't really like it, you're not going to say, I just bought the world's shittiest car. I just bought something that uh, I made a big, a big mistake. I just lost so much money buying this car. People always like to justify what they're buying. Now, in the real world, just like uh, in the uh, trading world, we do not like to admit that we are wrong. The thing is with stocks, you're not supposed to get married to them. You're not supposed to hold stocks for the long run. You're not supposed, when I say long run, I'm, I'm meaning uh, when you're day trading, I'm not talking now about investing in stock because we're talking about trading. I mean, certainly that's not my style to hold stocks for days or for weeks or for months, but I'm just talking intraday. If you took a stock intraday, and something goes wrong and let's discuss what goes wrong because I'm going to go through two examples here which we traded in the trading room so if something goes wrong you shouldn't keep holding if you think that something is going wrong or you should in other words admit that you were wrong stocks are to be dated not to get married to once you've got uh, yourself something that's going wrong Cut the relationship. Cut it clear. Cut it quickly. Don't continue holding to something that doesn't go the right way. Sometimes you can see that right at the beginning. Now, I know it sounds quite simple. I mean, why should you let it go? I mean, you just moved into a stock. It's not doing anything. Why should you let it go? Well, the answer is very, very simple. Uh, you just need to admit the fact that you were wrong. It's not easy to admit that you were wrong. Now I'm going to give you two examples. Here's one of them. Uh, we're looking at Snap here. It was a few weeks, maybe a month ago. I'm not sure. Yeah, approximately a month ago in the trading room. Uh, Snap uh, finished, as you can see here. Let me start with my marker here. Finished the previous day somewhere near $12. Opened up around $15. Uh, that would be like a 25% gap up. So a huge gap up in Snap. Uh, initial move is down, then it started to move higher. What are we seeing in this example? Can you please help me? What is there? I mean, there's some kind of a trading system here that I see, which is very, very clear, very, very simple. You know, we discussed that plenty of times in the trading room. Gap and go, exactly. So we're seeing a gap and go here. When the stock is gapping up more than 3%, it usually means that it's going to continue higher. Why is that? Uh, institutional traders are not involved over stocks that are, most of them are not involved in stocks that are gapping up more than 3%. And that means that it's all in the hands of the traders, investors. Actually, very, very small part of that is traders, us. Uh, the vast... Uh, uh, buyers would be the uh, long-time investors and we're just a very very small part but the thing is people love to buy stocks when they're gapping up and since there's no institutional traders to take them down you know they make money from closing the gap but we're not going to discuss that right now uh, then it's very very likely for the stock uh, to continue higher 
Why? Because people love to buy stocks when they're up. Now, beat me if I know why. Like if a stock is gapping up 25%, uh, snap, whatever, doesn't matter which, gapping up 25%. I mean, personally, I would just run away. If I would have held it, I would take my profits, whatever, but I would definitely not go long. But the thing is with stocks which are gapping up dramatically is that people love to buy them when they're up. Uh, people love to join stocks which are winners. People love to join stocks which are gapping up and they usually drive them higher. So what we're seeing here is a very good example for a potential gap and go. So I'm thinking I should go long over 1550. So we've got a very nice technical formation here. Uh, again, started with a gap up, came down a bit, moved higher, pulled back down. Now going up again, these are one minute candles. So we're talking into like, uh, what, the seventh minutes here. So still a lot of volume, still a lot of momentum. I mean, just take a look at the volume right over here below. So nothing wrong about this decision. You want to buy a stock where everybody is buying, uh, where the greed kicks in. You want to be there. You want to be a part of it. You just don't want to get married to it. I mean, you don't want to go sleeping with it. You don't want to hold it over, I don't know, sometimes a few minutes, sometimes a few days, uh, sorry, a few hours. Uh, but basically, the first push up is the push where everybody is supposed to join and help you. Now, let's just assume that my uh, entry point should be 1550. Where would you uh, put your stop? If you don't mind just writing down. Uh, previous support, as you can see here, if I'm going to mark this point over here, that would be 12, uh, 15, uh, 1520. So that right over here, that's 1520. Where would you put your stop? I mean, the low of the candle is 1520. If I remember correctly, it does not matter if I'm wrong a bit here uh, or whatever, but uh, I think it was 1520, yeah, sure. So um, where would you put your stop? If I bought it at 15.50, this recent low here is 15.20. So you're saying 15. Now the low of the day would be around 14.75 or so, I guess. Uh, 15, 14, 99. Well, if you, if you say 15, then certainly it should be one cent below because that should be the whole number. It may protect you. Um, 15, 19, 15, 20, 15, 19. I, I personally think that, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with many of you guys, which said, uh, 15, 19. Well, 15, 20 would be the recent low. You, you want to give it like another cent or so. You want to give it like another cent. That should be the point where you should move out of the trade. So I'm looking at a trade where the entry should be 15.50. Stop loss around 30 cents. Now, of course, it's a bit more. We always have to remember that uh, when you have a stop loss and when you have an entry point, you always buy a little bit higher and you always sell a bit, a bit lower than what you've got. So this could easily be, instead of uh, 30 cents stop loss, this could easily be something like 35 cents possibly a little bit more, but that's approximately the idea of, uh, of uh, where the stock should be sold. Now, uh, there's, there's another way of looking at it. And uh, before we continue higher, let me just paint another line here. Uh, you always need to remember that uh, when you uh, take a stock and you expect it to move higher and it fails, uh, to imagine the point of your stop loss. For example, let's just imagine it's working out at the beginning. I'm painting a line now. And then it did not get to your target. And then it starts failing and coming down and coming down and coming down. What would be the point where now, after looking at what it has done, would be your stop loss? What would be that point? You see, initially you think, well, if it would have moved just one cent higher, my stop should be at around 15.20. But what happens if it moves like 20 cents higher? Where then should be your stop loss? Uh, should it be your entry point? Answer no. Why? Because there's 
your entry does not matter to anybody nobody cares about your entry point the market doesn't care <laughs> stock doesn't care uh, we don't care nobody cares about your entry so there's nothing with entry I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this because I know some of you are thinking this way about putting a stop at your entry point so I'm, I'm not gonna lose anything well spikes will take you out I mean very small intraday movements actually not really spikes they could take you out very very easy you're not supposed to be putting your stop but what you should do is really look at the point of no return I would call it in this case I would say somewhere around here even before 1520 above 1520 and why there is a point where you see the stock coming down and you could think well that would be the point where it's more likely to continue down I would call it the 80% point the 80% and again we're not going to discuss that right now I'm just mentioning this the 80% point should be the point where you think well if it gets there there's like an 80% chance in your opinion well if you're just starting out you're a novice trader you don't really know what is your opinion or not if you're right or not but you build up this feeling you build up this uh, notion of well if it's going to be there it's probably going to come down continue coming down this is something you need to build but this is something you need to practice as well so where would be the point of no return the point where like 80 percent chance is going to continue higher of course like 20 percent is going to shoot higher and you're going to be extremely uh sorry you didn't hold for it but uh basically i would say it probably could be over 1550. well uh let's see what happens next okay let's see what happened next so I went long 1550 my expectation from snap over 1550 was a quick move up I mean the stock is up 25 percent there's a huge volume going on uh, there's a very nice technical formation and again I'm saying quite clearly right now looking at this back weeks ago it was the right decision to go long you expect it to move strong strongly higher well that did not happen as you can see it moved up just a few cents and then just continued higher and there's another very bad sign there what would be the second bad sign I mean the fact that it just failed here right over here that would be the first bad sign where's the next bad sign and then of course just went sideways and then of course just went sideways so if you look at stock I was expecting it to race higher up to the sky and it just moved up a few cents started going sideways uh, the volume actually no you know once it moved higher look here you see that if I go down the volume spiked here so the volume was right there was nothing wrong about the volume volume was right and when the stock is going sideways you actually want to see lower volume and then you want to see another uh, volume the volume going up when it moves up to a new high and look at this volume bar over here there was a high volume here you see this topping tail over here just remember this topping tail took the stock to a new high so you're saying the fourth uh, low range candle well um, okay so it went sideways right but I, I really want to talk about this candle here look at this topping tail here just forget it is a topic tail now just think about it this was a green candle stock moved up to a new high and although it moved up to a new high that was just a few cents higher than the first high and then it came down it actually kind of spiked down even right after moving to a new high I mean what does that tell you about snap trying to move to a new high it just tells you really it just tells you that there's a big seller out there there's a lot of sellers out there so I don't know who they are I don't care who they are snap tried to move higher twice and it failed first time it tried to move here second try it right second time it tried to move there I don't care about the technical formation I don't care about the name you give it I mean just think think logically you're looking at the stock that's supposed to go sky high this stock is up 25 percent by the time it reaches it a bit more so and there's a high volume on the breakout but then it leaves a topping tail one of the strongest ever reversal formations for a stock that is moving 
for stock is a stock that is moving to a new high or actually the same opposite side when it's moving to a new low and then it fails and comes down from there so when you see a stock that is failing to move to a new high and leaving a topping tail this topping tail at the top is one of the world's strongest reversals so the question what do you do what do you do when you see something going this way i mean stock definitely not doing what you expected it to do fail to move higher for the second time spike down a bit now you're in red getting back to green territory what do you do get out stop the trade any other idea reduce <laughs> the topic of our lesson right you're right close the position well tell you what <laughs> you're right yeah absolutely all answers are correct actually the uh, best answer would be the best answer would be close the trade get out follow the plan absolutely not Alexander I'll tell you why the, the reason you're not supposed to follow the plan because it did not reach my stop loss possibly it didn't I'm not sure here I'm not sure maybe this one reached I'll, I'll, I have my, my, my exit point soon I'll show you but anyway uh, look the stock is just going sideways all along this line over here stock did not hit my stop loss did not hit my stop loss uh, am I supposed to stay in and just wait for it to hit my stop loss or move higher I told you earlier about getting married to stocks I also mentioned the fact that people don't like to admit that they were wrong I mean I was wrong I expected it to move higher here okay so I held a few more minutes then it failed once more over here you see I was wrong if I was wrong I'm supposed to admit the fact that I was wrong and I'm supposed to close down that trade all completely I'm not supposed to hang on to it I could be a few cents higher I could be a few cents down or I could reach my stop loss possibly here everything could happen here but I'm not supposed to hold for the stock now you need to understand the following and that's a little bit advanced I mean that's what that's the idea of these lessons that's why we're doing this mentorship the advanced part of this mentorship is that you will realize that targets and stop losses are not written in stone there are things there are points which you should consider at every given moment you should consider your target all the time for example market changing direction markets coming down I don't know you should consider your stop loss at any time you should consider your stop loss based on the behavior of the stock based on the behavior of the market based on the behavior of whatever based on announcements in the market whatever's going to happen you should consider all the time your targets and your stop the problem is when you're just starting out this is quite a hard rule to give you right now if I'm saying you should consider everything all the time if I'm like <coughs> if I'm like giving you a free hand right now well I'm not your big brother right I'm not the one to give you or to take or to den deny it from you but the thing is as your educator if I'm going to tell you well it's all right when you're starting out just change your stop or change your target when you're starting out that's going to be tough on you because then you're going to do it as you feel and the way you feel is really uh, usually when you're just starting out that's a problematic uh, thing to say to you so in fact when you start out yeah have your target have your stop loss but I'm talking about a few months later I'm talking about when you finally realize what trading is all about when you finally realize that trading is probably harder than what you thought when you just joined up well, at that point you should be at the point where you should realize that stop loss and target may change may change you know for example I usually say you don't move out on spikes like if I if I if, if it would have spiked down let's say that this spike down over here would have reached my stop loss okay if it would have reached my stop loss then uh, definitely I would be out 
uh, if, if it comes down slowly, but if it spiked down, I would not be out. It's not a lesson about spiking up or down. We, we did cover that in other uh, lessons, uh, but I'm just giving you an example here so that you understand that things could change. Things are not the same. You need to, uh, uh, at any time, you need to reconsider your stop. There's not like a permanent stop or a permanent target. This just doesn't, doesn't happen. Uh, question here. <clears throat> Let me see. Where did you see the stock? The pre-market? I don't remember, actually. I don't think I did, Elvin, because it's usually not uh, the thing I'm doing. But, you know, technically it could have some kind of an issues in the pre-market. I don't usually uh, trade pre-market. Uh, I don't re usually watch pre-market. It has to do with some systems that are important, like Scott uses that quite a lot. I'm personally not, not quite using that. So anyway, I'm looking at the stock and I'm trying to figure out what to do. Another way of trying to figure out what to do is actually to ask the stock. Like treat it like a human being now. Seriously, I'm not joking. And um, <laughs> I didn't lose it, although it may sound like it right now. Ask it. What do you want to do? Not joking. Again, I'm not joking. Look at it right here at this area over here. Maybe it came down, then it moved up again. Now it's going up again. Now it's back to your entry point approximately. You should like pause right now and ask this person. It's not a person and it's not going to ask you if you were wondering. But ask it, where do you want to go? Seriously, like snap, where do you want to go? Well, if the answer is going to be something like, well, mm, I haven't really decided. Because that's really the clear answer Snap's giving you. Snap's giving you an answer, I haven't decided. I don't know where I want to go. Well, I'm up like uh, 25%. Well, it's more likely, yeah, I'm going to continue higher. But hmm, I don't really, I'm not really sure about that. So, again, if you look at the stock and you're not really, and, and you don't understand what it's doing, ask the stock. It sounds funny, I know but that helps you understand where the stock is going. Um, so what are you supposed to do? I mentioned earlier, some of you mentioned, you should move out of the stock. Absolutely, I should move out of the stock 100%. You're absolutely right. Can I do that? No, I can't. Why? Because I'm a human being. And because I don't like to admit that I'm wrong. And because there's like 2,000 people watching my p now. And because <laughs> I really want to have a winner. And because maybe I was down the previous trade and I want to make up for it. And maybe because, well, there's so many things I could say now. I don't want to move out. It's very, very hard to admit that you're wrong and to move out. Can you buy a car and sell it a month later? You were, out. You were wrong. You bought a car. You don't like it anymore. Will you sell it a month later? <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you something. I bought this craziest car a few, uh, uh, a few weeks ago. I bought this craziest car. It's a uh, BMW 815M uh, with a spatial engine. I mean, even not, not the, the standard M850. It's like 620 horsepower, something like that. And it comes with... Uh, I don't know, everything you could uh, think about. I just wanted this car for whatever reason. And my friend told me you're not going to last. Now, this friend of mine is driving a Porsche 911 Turbo, okay? So it's, 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 it's even more wild than mine. But anyway, this guy told me, he's a good friend of mine, he told me you're not going to last. At this point right now, I know he was right. I'm not going to last. It, it's not for me. <laughs> I'm looking for a comfortable car. I'm not looking for a car that by accident, accidentally, I just click the gas pedal and it ran like crazy. And all of a sudden, my water bottle is like flying back seat. I'm not joking. It happened to me. So he just told me, you're not going to last. You ask me right now, do I like my car? It's the world's best. It's fantastic. I love it. I really adore it. I spent 200,000 euros on that car almost. 
<laughs> I love my car. <laughs> so you see, I'm not going to admit right now I don't want it anymore. And <laughs> he actually came back to me like two days ago and he said, well, if you're rethinking, I've got my friend who wants to buy it. And I said, you know what? If this guy's going to pay me, I just bought it a few weeks ago. If this guy's going to pay me very close to what I paid, I'm okay with this. I just don't feel like I want to lose money selling this car right now. You understand what I'm saying? Probably going to sell it. But I don't know when until it comes to the point where it's really like too much for me. Like it's really like I want to change. I need to change. Or at least I kind of justified what I did. I mean, the last time I bought a car like this, that was a BMW i8. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. And it lasted for seven months or so. So this one probably going to last another six months or so. <laughs> I guess best case scenario. So yeah, the i8 was an electric car. Uh, kind of combination, really. So you see what I'm saying? I can't admit that I was wrong. I can't admit. The way to solve that? Lower your size. That's it. That's the only way to solve it. Lower your size. So it actually tells you, and I'll go back to the demons. I mentioned the demons quite a lot of times. You know, the demon on your right shoulder whispering in your, or actually shouting in your right ear, saying something like, you remember the last time you bought this stock, it didn't do much, you sold it, and then it took... It went over the highs. It could have been like a crazy winner and you just wasted everything. And the other one says, well, yeah, but do you also remember the last time when you held to this stock and it just came down and crashed and you had a big loss? Well, I, I got to do something about my two demons, not just one of them. The one who says, hold it, continue. And the other says, be careful. It's going to come down. So the way to deal with that, sell half. I'm not talking about, about the partial where I would sell three quarters or more. I'm talking about sell half. Sell half would quiet this guy on my right shoulder saying it's going to go high. Okay, I just left you half, prove yourself. And this guy says on my left shoulder, shouting in my left ear and saying it's going to come down. Okay, I reduced my risk. Now, can I please continue? That's it. I need to take care of my demons. I need to, I, I need to be at a point where I, 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 I survive this inner feeling of I cannot admit the fact that I was wrong. Is that easy? No, it's very, very hard. How many of you are doing that? When's the last time you did anything like that? Can you please admit the point where you took a stock, you held to it, you saw it's not doing anything right, and you kept holding to it. I mean, when's the last time you sold it? Near your entry. Small profit, small loss. Did you ever do something like that? Yes, no, if you don't mind saying now. Did you reduce size when something didn't work out? You've got two heroes here. Loren is a hero. Seriously a hero, German. I'm, I'm just saying, I've got plenty of women. You did that? <laughs> I want to have a poll. I want to have a poll. I don't. I mean, I, I. Hold on a second. Let's say it this way. In the last um, month or so, trading, uh, did you reduce your size in a stock, of course, that didn't go your way? Yes or no? In the last, in the, in the last few weeks. I mean, did it happen to you that you reduced your size? Like selling half or closing it down? I'm actually surprised. I'm seeing like 55% of you saying that you did reduce your size and 44% saying that you did not. I'm quite surprised. And really, uh, that, that's, that's great. That's great. If you can do that, that's great. Um, I, I can tell you that it's definitely uh, a big mistake that I'm not doing it more than I should. Now, the next thing you should ask yourself, are you happy with the fact that you did not do that to every stock that did not go the right way? That may have, uh, should have been my, my question to you guys, but you, you understand where I'm going. It's very, very hard to reduce size. Now, in this case, I reduced my size right over here. 
at 1547. Now the thing is, the closer you are to your entry point, it doesn't matter if you're up a few cents or down a few cents, and I was just down a few cents. The closer you are to your entry point, the harder it is to reduce your size. Why is that? Because you say, well, I'm just down five cents or so. I could probably hold on a little bit more. I could probably hold for it to move higher. It looks like it's just about to do that. It was a, li a little bit lower here. Now it's coming up just a bit. And well, I shouldn't. Maybe I should hold. Well, that's wrong. In fact, the best place to reduce size is once it's close to your entry point. And it doesn't matter if you're up or down. Then the second point where I reduced my size was right over here. Actually sold, uh, uh, sold the other half right over there. Yeah, I think it hit my stop right there. Yeah, 1590, of course, yes. It hit my stop right there. So the end result of this trade was that my average price, my average exit price was 1533 instead of 1519. And that means that I lost, let's just talk about technically here, I lost like 17 cents instead of 30 something cents. Uh, on average, of course, on average. So I reduced my size quite dramatically, quite dramatically. Like, let's, okay, 13, 3, 15, 17, yeah, 17 cents instead of 30 cents. I reduced my loss quite dramatically because I did have a stop loss. I don't use hard stops. That's an, again an issue for another lesson. I reduced my I reduced my quantity here at 1547 and moved out at my planned stop loss, which was 1519. Now I'm looking at the trade right now, the way it looks. I did right. Stock is trending lower. Uh, stock came down, failed to move higher, came down once, moved up, new low, lower low. Now we can see we can see that it's kind of trending lower. Try to move higher, did not move to a new high, uh, and then moves to a new low. That was my previous point of support. I should have moved out at uh, 1519, but again the average loss in this case was 1533. Now don't get it wrong. I would have moved out whole size at 1519, just that in this case specifically I reduced my loss. Now uh, I'll go back once more to something I often say. Uh, you know, when you're trading, in order to get the best risk reward, and it doesn't matter what's your risk reward, mine is one to one. In order to guess, to get the best risk reward, what you should do is always think about the advantage of just a few cents. And again, I'll send you back to your uh, to your uh, trading accounts, and I would ask you. Uh, especially if you're losing, let's say you're losing for the past three months, six months, one year, I would ask you to just add three cents to every trade you took. Just look at your, just look at your, uh, um, the number of tickets you've got. Add three cents to every ticket you had in the past week, uh, year, the past month or whatever. And surprise, surprise, you're going to find out that you move to green territory just because of three cents per trade. I'm talking here about uh, averaging your loss uh, to 17 cents instead of 30 cents, which means you just did a great job by reducing your uh, uh, by reducing your record, by reducing your loss. So if you just happen to do some of these things ever once on, in, in a while, and by that reducing your loss, then you're doing a great job. And this could be the difference between losing money and making money. Now, what do you think uh, happened next? Like, uh, hold on a second, I do have a poll here, I believe. Yeah. What do you think? Did it go up or down from here after that? You're looking at what happened. What do you think? Up or down after that stop? What would be the next move? If you get a poll, click the answer. I've got like 60% saying it's probably going to come down and 40% saying it's going to go up. Okay, uh, a bit more, 63 saying it's going to come down. Well, uh, you're wrong. 
it moved higher. And this could have been a very nice winner. But tell you what, you were not wrong by assuming it's going to come down. You were wrong by, I mean, in this case, you just couldn't have known, me included. There's no way you could have guessed it. And by guessing it's going to move higher, it's just guessing. And we're not here to guess. We're not here to gamble. We're not here to uh, make assumptions based on no idea why. We just here to look at the chart and the chart tells us this stock want to come down. And if it tells us this stock want to come down, you need to be out. And yes, if you moved out, I moved out. I moved out of the trade. No big loss, but I moved out of that trade. If you move out and then you come in an hour later and you see the stock topping, moving over the highs and this could have been a fantastic winner and you just had a loser, you're going to be sorry you didn't hold to it. Absolutely so. But you shouldn't be sorry too much because you did the right thing. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't hold, but I did the right thing. I did exactly the right thing. I moved out of the trade when I should have moved out. So just give yourself a pat on the shoulder and say, fine, you did a good job. You were right. There's nothing wrong about it. You couldn't have known it's going to continue higher. I could have stopped the presentation here. Uh, it was more, definitely more likely to come down. It did not come down. Who cares? I don't know if the market went higher or not. I'm actually, I, I'm not here to, to, to I, I just don't remember. But the thing is, you shouldn't uh, consider that as a problem. Now, let's, talk, let's take a look at uh, another example here. Uh, this time it's Facebook. And uh, Facebook uh, also quite a big gap up, as you can see, up, down, moving up to a new high, pulling back down. It looks like a decent long right over here, 180.20. It looks like a nice long. It looks like something that could work out. And of course, it also has to do with the market direction and so on. So if I look at Facebook, I'm thinking, well, I like to go long. And then it happens that. My stop was supposed to be right over here. Worst case scenario, just below this recent uh, low. And that means that uh, this stock actually came down and hit my stop. But I never ever move out on spikes. Now look at what happened here. Again, a topping spy, a topping candle here. Stock came down quite quickly and uh, touched the place where I should have moved out. But I never move out on spikes because spikes like 95%, maybe more, in uh, are, are getting corrected or should should get should get corrected. And therefore, uh, as you can see, stock kind of continue going sideways, even moving a little bit higher. So I do not move out there, but definitely don't like this trade anymore. I'm looking at Facebook. I thought it's going to move over 180.20. It did move just a few cents and then came down with a spike. And now it's just moving sideways. Yes, it looks like it's about to be back to my entry point. But again, look at Facebook and ask it, what do you want to do? I mean, what what do you want to do? Do you want to go up? Do you want to go down? The answer you're going to get is, I don't know. No idea, no clue. I did not make up my mind. And then um, at this point, I sold half, which was, in my opinion, the right point. Why? Because first, I, I mean, the basic idea here, the stock was just going sideways. It was just going sideways. It just didn't do what I expected it to do. There was no reason for me to hold on to a stock and just gamble. It could have came down from here. It could continue higher. I have absolutely no idea what the stock's going to do next. But I did sell half. And that was the right thing to do because it was above my stop loss. And then came something, came something quite interesting, as you can see here, uh, because Facebook from that point on started moving higher and did finally reach the point where I had my plant partial, where I sold the second half in a profit. So the fact that I sold my first half at a loss does not really mean that this trade is going to come out wrong. Does not really mean that this trade is going to be a losing trade, just like we've seen in the previous example. It just means that you lowered your size, you're taking now less risk, and that's the right thing to do. Actually, the right thing to do would be closing both of them. The other one, the previous one, I should have closed a few cents below my entry point. That would have been like a five cent loser. 
Instead of that, I had a 17 cent loser. I should have closed it down. Here, I should have closed it too. But instead, I've got a winner. Sometimes you get a winner, sometimes you get a loser. But the, really the correct answer, you should close it. You shouldn't be holding to it. My average uh, sell price was 180.55, which was on average 33 cents over my entry point. That's it. The fact that I sold half here does not mean that now I need to wait for another, uh, for a different target. The target should be where I planned it to be. And uh, when you look at this behavior over here, uh, approximate target, approximate stop loss, something like that. Again, one to one risk reward. That would be approximately the plans, the trade I'm, 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 I'm planning. So again, the basic idea is when you've got yourself a stock that's not going your way, you've got two open choice. One, move out altogether. You ask me, that's the right thing to do, but it's almost inhuman to do that. Depends. Some of you are better than me, I guess, mentally. And the second option is just reduce your size. Reduce a quarter, reduce half, reduce three quarters. Uh, you don't want to call yourself an idiot. I don't want to call myself an idiot, so I'm keeping like a half. I'm still hoping it's going to make it. I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. It's more likely not the right thing to do. But the minimum I would expect you to do as a trader is that um, you should admit to the fact that you were wrong and reduce your size. Not necessarily the whole stop loss, uh, sometimes even over your buying point, which is the hardest thing to do. Like imagine you bought it at the price, now it's up like five cents. Can you then reduce your size when it's up five cents? Well, the answer here is going to be a really tough one. If like 60% of you earlier said, or whatever, 50% said that you, you, you did or you didn't, I guess in a small profit, most of you would not close it. Me included, but reducing your size because it's not going anywhere, that would be the right thing to do. Well, that's it. That was our lesson. Um, is there anything you want me to, you want to ask me regarding that? Uh, these were all long, so Roberto. These two examples were long, but definitely uh, reduce your size when you're shorting. Reduce your size when you're going long. Definitely reduce your size, even if you're in profit. Just look at the stock. It's not doing what you expected to do. Reduce your size. If it goes in your favor after you reduced, it starts trending up. Do you add? Uh, Sean, let me say it this way. No idea. And it depends on market direction. It depends if I see something special going on in the stock that I'm trading. Um, not all trades are created equally. You look at the trade and then you make a decision. The chance for that, Sean, would be relatively low. Why? Because in my mind, I know that I reduce size and maybe I want to compensate it now for adding size. I have to question why I'm doing that. So probably the answer is going to be no. But if something really interesting come, comes along, I should consider that. I can't tell you no for sure. Level two, is there cases use level two to get into resistance? Well, not today, Alexander, sorry. We're not gonna talk about level two. That would be like totally different thing. But uh, for example, right over here, you should take a look at the level two and uh, try and realize whether you're doing the right thing all the time. Level two counts. Uh, no, Lorraine, I would not, I would not at, at, at the entry again. Definitely not. Definitely not. I wouldn't do that. You talk about one to one risk reward and the stop is one dollar and you get about 90 cents and start seeing resistance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely true, Mark. I mentioned earlier, that's exactly what I was trying to say earlier, that when you are at a point where you see clear, I mean, you planned $1, but you see clear resistance at 90 cents or something else comes along. For example, level two, you see a lot of sellers. <laughs> There's resistance too. Uh, or you see the market coming down. Definitely think about reducing your size. So maybe not the whole partial, maybe a little bit less, but definitely reduce your size again, your target and your stop should be something you consider at all times. You don't just blindly 
have your target and your stop. This should be changed every once in a while. It's not always so, but you definitely need to consider that. Glad to hear that, Axel. Glad to hear Start Trader course was good for you. Yeah, if, if the stop was reached, uh, Angel, if the stop was reached, then I definitely close. So reducing your size is definitely before a stop is reached. Absolutely so, yeah. Well, guys, uh, it is 10 p.m. here, and I still some got some uh, Netflix series I want to watch today. <laughs> so I've got, like, last chance. Uh, um, do I change my stop after taking partial, uh, Hussein? Uh, depends. Uh, this could happen, but not for sure. <laughs> yeah. Schönen Abend, Mark. Danke. Good night, traders. Uh, good day, depending where you are. I'll see you all tomorrow in the trading room and um, enjoy your day. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to take Traders free welcome course. It was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading. Click here to sign up for this no risk, no cost offer. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.